Hi, welcome to another Ask GMBN Tech. Get your questions in down there, keep them tech related, and use that hashtag Ask GMBN Tech, and we'll try and help you out. First question this week is from Jeremy King. I'm considering giving a coil shock a go. My bike currently uses an uncommon shock size though, uh, 230 by 62.5. Uh, 230 by 60 or 230 by 65 seem to be more common. Does a 2.5 mil difference in travel really make that much of a difference? And if so, should I go up or down in travel? Uh, PS, I've been in contact with the manufacturer, but they weren't much help. Um, okay, so what you need to think about here, well, the 62.5 thing is fairly common, to be fair, you see it on quite a lot of bikes. I've had some nuke-proof bikes that have had that uh, that size. Essentially, it's a two, uh, two and a half mil spacer internally on the shock. So really, you wanna go for the longer shock and have the spacer for it to be correct. Now, I say that because 2.5 millimeters at the shock can translate to enough movement at the wheel um, for the tire to foul your frame or the linkage to foul on something. So I wouldn't risk anything like that. I would try and get the correct one. It essentially, it is just a spacer internally on the shock to turn it into that. So, you know, it's not that uncommon as you might think. Um, yeah, well, there's your answer, basically. Next up from Toby who says, um, although you said wheels larger than 29 inch would be stupid and not needed, can you see them being manufactured in the future? Uh, even though it would be pointless in your opinion, do you think it could happen? Well, they kind of already are. I reported from a show at Sea Otter, well, it was a Sea Otter Europe show, so Girona, probably the year before COVID. God, I can't remember that. It feels like a long time ago, doesn't it? Um, but went to that show and there was a manufacturer making 36 inch wheel bikes, which I kind of looked at and kind of mocked. I mean, they were beautifully made. I can't can't take that away from them. They're really nice, but I couldn't help but thinking that they were just trying to make make a bit of a mockery of um, of bikes. I, I don't see the point, right? Yes, bigger wheels will make you roll over stuff. But wheels that big, you could ride over anything. You could ride over a granny and you wouldn't even feel the tins of cat food in their pockets. But I'm telling you, a wheel that big, it's gonna be so slow to accelerate and so slow to decelerate, let alone mentioning the geometry problems you're gonna have with things like the front wheel overlap with your, with your foot. I just can't see it being a feasibility. Um, that said, GCN made a bike, well, someone made a bike for GCN with 36 inch wheels, which is in our workshop. And I'm keen to just get it out for a ride, just, just for a laugh, basically. So uh, if you want to see me ride that in a video, let us know down there, because I'd happily take it out for a mountain bike ride, just to, just to have a laugh, to see what it's like on the trail. Uh, in fact, I'm, don't even answer, I'm going to do it, just because the bike is just crazy looking. Uh, that's if they'll let me ride it. Uh, we'll see. Um, but no, you know, as much as I do mock some things, Honestly, I'm just trying to be practical about stuff. And at the end of the day, if it's a bike, generally, I love them, all kinds. Um, it's just easy to take the mick out of stuff, isn't it? Uh, next starts from Rory King. How can I work out if a 12-speed cassette would fit on an eight-speed Shimano cassette body? Uh, I hate these questions because it makes me really have to trawl back through memory. So as far as I remember, 789, I'm gonna say 789 and 10-speed fit on the same body, and 11-speed, you need a slightly different body, which 12-speed fits on, but on the 11-speed body, you can also fit 7, 8, and 9-speed with spacers, I think. Um, but bearing in mind as well, if you're talking about putting a 12-speed cassette on a bike that's got an 8-speed on there already, you've probably got a 135 mil back end, so you might have issues with chain line. Anyway, you might be able to get it on there, uh, but it might not play very well with your front chain line there. Um, anyone else put as many gears as that on a previous bike that's got like eight speed? Um, have you made it work? Did the chain line work okay? It's been a long time since, since I've experimented with this stuff. Uh, sorry, Rory, hopefully it gives you a little bit of an answer there, but I'm pretty sure seven, eight, nine, and 10 work on one free up body and the, the 11 and 12 is very slightly bigger. Um, I will double check this. I'm sure someone down there is gonna be double checking as this show is going on. So no, no, you got it wrong. They all fit on the same, but I'm fairly sure that's right. Um, next up, Doddy, I've got a troubleshooting question. I decided to convert to a tubeless setup with my new bike. Thing is, I can't for the life of me put a tire on the rim. I've tried using tire levers, but although I've got the tire to go in the rim, I tore the tubeless tape. Please help me. Okay, so a few things you can do here, starting from scratch, uh, you can actually stretch your tire very slightly. Um, this may or may not actually do anything, but I'm sure that this helps. I've done this in the past, where you quite literally stand on the tire and you literally pull that tire very slightly. 
I'm sure that it sort of warms it up enough that you can help get it on the rim. Uh, but more importantly, the bigger thing that's gonna help you is warm soapy water. Uh, get loads of sort of soap suds, get it on the beading of the tire, get it around the rim, and then hopefully you can squeeze it on much easier with less risk of damaging anything. Uh, when you're squeezing a tight tire on, something you need to take care with is the internal rim, uh, depending on the profile of yours. Let's just say it's fairly V section in shape. You want to squeeze all the beading so the beading sits into that V. At that point, it's going to have no tension on it. So it's going to be easier to get the rest of the beading on. If your tire is already sitting at the, uh, the sides where the, the hook is to grab that bead, already there's tension on it. So it's going to be really difficult to get that last bit on. Uh, so just try and work your way around, take your time, and try not to suffer from workshop rage because it's the worst phenomenon ever, and it would just make everything five times harder, and you'll you know you'll split your tire or end up doing something. Uh, take your time. Warm soapy water will definitely help, uh, and it will evaporate. So don't worry about that. Uh, next up on Fast Fox for you. Um, I've got a question, can you run a SRAM NX crank in a Shimano bottom bracket? Uh, no, I don't think you can because SRAM have got GXP and um, what's the other new one, Dub. So GXP is, I think it's 24 and, I'm gonna say 24 and 22 millimeters. Um, the axle is slightly different at one end. Uh, whereas the Shimano is 24 all the way through, and then Dub is 29, well, 28.99, isn't it? 28.99 millimeters. I think everyone laughed at that when it came out. Uh, so no, you kind of can't because of that, really. Uh, next up, is there any way to see any telemetry from braking on the trail, braking points, how hard you pull the brake, etc.? Be awesome to see how top pro riders use their brakes whilst cornering. Uh, it'd be also very cool to see POV riding videos with braking usage in the low corner. Um, it's funny you should say this. We're actually in the middle of planning a similar style video where we're going to be comparing the braking power of three different braking setups. Uh, basically to understand not just the braking power, but how much more you'll end up using a brake with less power over a brake with more power. Uh, the fatigue it will have on the rider uh, and just the way that you ride. Because I'm pretty sure just from the outlay that if you were to run, let's just say 160 mil rotors front and rear with an XC brake and then 200 mil rotors with a four pop brake, on the more powerful brake, you're barely gonna be on the brakes by comparison. You're only gonna brake when you need to adjust speed, whereas the other brakes, you're gonna be riding them the whole time, so the brake's gonna be hot, it's gonna be struggling, and your hands are gonna feel it more. Um, so yeah, really interesting points, and we are actually working with the telemetry system uh, in order to get this, but we're just trying to finalize the correct location to do it, because as you'd imagine, other factors will affect the end test results, like weather, uh, riding conditions, doesn't matter what the riding conditions are, but they have to basically be consistent through the time of testing, otherwise you would just get um, poor results. So yeah, we are making something along those lines. We're just kind of struggling to nail all of that criteria at the moment. More on that soon, hopefully. Uh, next from Ben Alden. Hi, I've got a 2006 Specialized Hard Rock Sport with V-brakes, and I want to upgrade the wheels for best all-round performance. Is it possible to fit 27.5 to this model? If so, which size and makes would you recommend? Most of my riding is fairly easy stuff um, or road. Not really, no. Um, you can only do this on bikes of adjustable geometry, really. Now, although there's not much difference between 26 and 27.5, uh, the difference will actually make a few differences in terms of the fit in your frame and what it does to it. Now, for example, it will make your bottom bracket too high and it will not feel immediately high, like it won't make a crazy difference, but it will make annoying differences to uh, your, like your daily riding. So for example, I've got a 26 inch wheel frame that I've converted into a commuter bike. Now to make the bike go as fast as possible, I, put, I laced up some 650B wheels or 27 and a half, and I put slicks on them, but the small size of the slicks meant the, uh, the outside diameter of the tire was only a little bit bigger than my 26 inch wheels with 2.4 inch tires, which I, I would usually run on that bike. Yet, the difference that's made is the bottom bracket is probably, is just that bit too high that with my saddle at the correct height, I can't touch the floor properly. Um, so on a commuter bike where I'm not running a drop post, it's actually a bit of a pain. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend doing this. Arguably you could do it on the front end, but honestly, I'm not sure that will really benefit your bike anymore. Uh, you'd be better off saving up for other upgrades that will improve your bike, like when your tires wear out, get yourself some really good tires, perhaps look at things like going tubeless or improve your braking on the bike with bigger disc rotors or better brake pad material, things like that that are gonna help you get a more 
out of the bike. Um, hopefully that helps. But yeah, I would avoid trying to sandwich in 27 and a half inch wheels into a 26 inch frame. Um, you just bump it up that uncomfortable high. And of course you're gonna have other clearance issues because if the frame doesn't have much clearance with the 26, you bring the tire even closer to that frame. So you're gonna have less mud clearance, less clearance for a decent sized tire. And in the front end, if it's got a suspension fork, the tire might actually bottom out on the crown. Um, so that is this part here. So you're, you've got the brace here and you've got the crown. There will always be a maximum size tire that the manufacturer says you can run. So, and the reason for, for that is under full compression, if that crown hits your tire, that fork is gonna stop you like a brake and you're gonna go straight out the front door. So uh, just take that into account. It's something I think people kind of forget about, to be honest. Uh, so just take care with things like that. And the last question uh, is from Matthew Cooper. And I have to confess, this question, I've actually posed this directly to GT Bikes. Uh, so I want to get you the right answer for this. So Matt says, uh, I've just purchased a new bike, a GT Sensor, and it came with an X-Fusion O2 Pro RL rear shock. I'm not that familiar with that particular shock, to be honest. And he says, I seem to be using all the travel available with maximum pressure in there just by, using, by doing small drops. I'm six for seven and I'm about 18 stone. Please help. So my initial thought would be that perhaps that shock, even with volume bands and that, you, you actually will be at maximum air pressure and it's not gonna get any better. So a coil shock, in theory, they could set one up for you that was gonna work much better with your weight, but I'm just waiting to hear back from them to see what they say. So we'll, we'll pick this one up very shortly. So I actually got in touch with GT and uh, to quote GT directly, in fact, they said, Realistically, if you're at that pressure, you need to be looking at some other options. So a coil shock is a great idea. The sensor is 100% compatible with coil and should perform well. Uh, to be honest, not sure 100% on spring weight, potentially a 600 or 650 pound spring would be a good starting point. Uh, so there you go, so there's some great advice directly from GT. Hopefully that helps you on your way. Okay, so that's another ask out the way. Hopefully you've got some more great questions and suggestions. Get involved in the comments. As always, keep it positive and we'll see you in the next one. Ta-ra.